thing that people will see your name attached to something, it doesn't really matter what the event's going to be. They're like, all right, double impact, I'm going. Because they know <laughs> what to expect already. I'll still say, you'll never get a better feeling than going out when you start and coming out when it's like. For real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>
So yeah, kind of always try and reply back. But when tickets are done, tickets are done, man. It's as simple as that, isn't it? People are vexed because they missed out. And then it's like, I know people get in that favor of mind, but they're like, you know, I'm never going to watch none of the stories or look at, look at yeah. no one's post for that. Yeah, don't give me. I've done that. I've done that a couple of times. I've been more feelings. Like, if, 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 I, if, I, if, if I think about it logically, a couple of times I'm like, you know what? I can't even go on social media. All I can go on is Twitter because no one can post, post their good time. <laughs> Just shut your mouth. Because you know everyone's gonna be posting about it, like all your friends that have gone there, and then you're just like, you know, well, I'm not, I'm not even gonna hurt myself. Because that's another thing we were talking about. When the people will see your name attached to something, it doesn't really matter what the event's gonna be. They're like, all right, double impact, we're going because they know (laughs) what to expect already. So you Mm. have built up that like repertoire over the years, Mm. which is mad. Yeah. Like what? What is the secret to that formula? To like every event it being sold out. What has been the formula? It hasn't always been like that. Mm-hmm. Hard work. We've been doing it like... for like twelve years. You know, mm-hmm. is it twelve? Yeah, about twelve years. Yeah, yeah. We've had we've had ups and downs. Yeah, yeah. That's about right. About two thousand and eight, isn't it? Two thousand seven. Yeah, yeah. April two thousand eight was the first one. Yeah. Literally. April, bro, my, man remembers the actual date, you know. That's sick, that is. <laughs> That's sick. Hold on, where uh, was this event? The first one. Yeah, yeah. Panama, and it was snowing. Panama, you know, oh my days. Mm-hmm. Okay, was that like a strictly like house rave? And that was everything. Yeah, everything. The first one was free as well. We just sorry, like... sorry, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't be pointing out they're too loud, you know, because people are going to be messaging like, oh, what about the free raves? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, what well, 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 for the free well, well, raves? I've never seen you that just for a for the free raves. That was when it used to be free as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, one? Double Impact and Friends. Oh, nah, don't, don't, nah, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> We've done a few, man. Swear yeah, down. Yeah. Them first ones, that was party, innit? That was at Panama Bar. I told you about party. Yeah, yeah, that was it. That was our first. That was our first thing. But that was because we we literally. I think before that event, we was at Panama Bar for someone's birthday, in it, Luca. I think it was Sarah's birth. Charlotte and Sarah, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, someone's yeah. birthday, and we we saw the venue and we was like, oh, this venue's nice, man." And we was like, "Why don't we just try and do something, man?" We got, like, "Yeah, cool. So let's try it, man." Just messaged all our friends and said, "Look, man, we're gonna put something on. Put a co- mm. couple of our our close DJs on." And it was it was sick, man. And we just thought, yo, let's run this regular. And we just started doing it every month. Sick. And then you got me Sugar Sweet after that with party, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's it, yeah. Went from there to Sugar Sweet, yeah. And then from oh, Sugar Sweet to Dragon Eye, isn't it? Dragon Eye, yeah. I told you this, you know. My memory's sick, you know. I told you this. Fuck, yeah. you know. So you lot have been like entrepreneurs in this thing from For then. real. For real. <laughs> Yeah. So how did it get from doing free raves to like where we're at now? Well, not technically where we're at now in lockdown, lockdown 2.0, but how did it get to Sunday sessions? Like what happened in between the past 12 years to get to Sunday sessions? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was obviously doing raves and then we got review. So we had that for a few years. 27, 11. Yeah, mad, <laughs> mad. <laughs> I, I can't like. I'm gonna just be honest. As security, I just thought like that place there was a a, a lovely groundhog place for absolute violence. Because I felt like he was going <laughs> until four in the morning, five in the morning, <laughs> six in the morning. I got to phone Bridges to make sure my Bridges all can door. Hey, are you you man all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you cool? Yeah, I think I might go to bed in it. Yeah, because I don't know what's going to happen over there. Because I went there a couple of times and I thought. Down a minute, it's a same crowd from like a mono Friday Rococo Sunday, but yeah, you know, you know, like the bottle girls, <laughs> and that was the first time I really seen efficient bottle service in Birmingham. You that know what that was? was? You know, know what that was? We, we went, um, before just before review, we went Miami on um, on a lad's holiday, mm. and we was in we was in the clubs in Miami, and we was watching yeah. how they do everything in it, and we saw the bottle service with the girls, and that, and we thought, you know what, that's that's a good look, man. So we brought it over to review and we thought, yeah, let's let's sell tables and let's sell bottles. And it, it, and, it pop, and it popped off, man. People loved it. So before 2711, was anybody else doing it in Birmingham? Like maybe like an Indian club or white clubs? Because I've never seen it in none of the, the black clubs, the urban clubs. Uh, for real, I have it either. 
I don't think so, but nah. Not that I can remember. Like how we were the first, we were the first, but are you wrong? Was like say it with your chest, and it like if you was the first, you was the first. You made the drug dealers spend the whole of their real money. <laughs> After two, three o'clock, it's just going to get wicked and wild in here. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> nah, it, was, it was a mad thing. So, how did you like get um review anyway? Like, how did you have your own nightclub? We drove, we drove past, and there was a for sale sign outside, and it was like, let's just phone it. So he called the guy and he was basically saying, try it out and just see how it goes. Okay. So kind, of, kind of deal that we couldn't really refuse. And I think we might Wait, y'all bought review. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Hot rock, I'm just thinking you like you've leased it or it's a big cousin's building. I and... just I didn't know that. By the building, we leased the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, what's so the yeah, yeah. right at the club kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but as it, but as it said, the, the first times, the first few events or nights that we was throwing at review, that was like trial and error. Do you get me? Like he was saying, like, see what you can do, see if you can get people in or not. Because mm. I, I think in the past, I don't think that place has worked really too like too well. I don't know what they had there before, but mm. it didn't really look like it was working too good. But like the first few nights at review, don't get don't like, don't get me wrong, right? We we had nobody in there. We was out flyering like every Friday and every Saturday night, yeah. and there weren't no one nobody coming in. See, no one coming in. Yeah, swear down, man. It, it came down to sitting down and working out a system of of how we can work this and get people looking into it. So then, obviously, okay. we put a team we put a team together. We put the DJ together. I think on our opening night of twenty seven eleven, we have we put DJ EZ. So, and we was teasing people with that all up until, so it was just a massive build up. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's kind of what let us off. And then the first night of it was just amazing, man. So, that, and then that was it. Once the first night, once you do an event and your first night's good, people mm. just start talking and then they're on it straight away for the next one, innit? Okay, okay. So, was you guys open before 2711 started then? Mm. Yeah. yeah. But 2711 was like the rebrand. Yeah, we had, yeah. we had Cherry Lips first. No, we, yeah. we was open first for about, Six weeks, then Cherry Lips came in, mm. and then we tried Scintillate, and that was dead. Mm. <laughs> that was, we were stuck then. I was like, we need to sort this out. Yeah. yeah. So then that's when we just did 2711. Okay. Where yeah. did the name come from? Obviously, I know it's the, the name of the actual date, but who actually yeah. chose that name? Does. Swear down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what was the inspiration behind that name? Bro, when it comes to stuff like this, like Luca will vouch and say, like, we always try and think, anytime we think of a name for an event back in the day or name for anything, I'm rubbish mm. at it. You get me? Luca's the man for that. Like, you get me? He's good with write-ups and all stuff like that. Okay. So with that, it was just a random thing. The date's the date. I just wanted you, obviously, we just wanted it to make it sound a bit different from anything else rather than calling it, like, a common club name. Yeah. And just thought, bang, 2711, what? See, see, see how it goes, isn't it? And, it? and it just stopped, man. It was just a nice little catch. Wait, is that the actual name? Two seven eleven. That was the name of the event, yeah. Well, 20, so it's not twenty seven eleven. Twenty seven. Yeah, two, then yes. I think we changed it to twenty seven eleven. So it just yeah. sounded a bit better. Yeah. Okay, I'm about to say I don't want to be saying the wrong name for nine years. Nah. That, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, saying twenty seven eleven with my chest. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. It's that's not good. Right. The number just says different things. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how long do you have twenty seven eleven for? Uh, that was about a year and a half until he shut. Yeah, yeah, coming up to two years, and yeah, about a year and a half. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, time just seems like such. It seems like it was longer than that because I just feel like I've been to so many different event events that were there, and for mm. that time it was just popping. Like if remember that that was like twenty seven eleven was weekly in it, so that's mm. like like every single Saturday night in it. Do you know what I mean? So okay. that's a, that was a different ball game from us because we we were always used to doing either monthly or just every now and again or special occasions. Mm. So twenty seven eleven was our first one that we said bang every Saturday night. Let's let's make this the place in it. So and that's that's probably why it felt like that. Yeah, and did you feel like the obviously the difference in the workload as to when you did the the monthly events to doing like a weekly event? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And stress. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, especially, especially, especially with the whole running of the whole club and it, it wasn't just the event it's just everything that went with running running the club as well okay so you had to implement like staff like bar staff and things like that as well yeah mad wait so how old were you used to uh at 27 11 times 25 26 yeah I, think, okay. I know we took it on when it was about 25 that is mad that is mm. That is mad because that is the age where you probably used to going out partying and used to was more or less business owners, you know. And mm. how hard was it though to own your actual club? Not that no, hard. how hard was it to own like a black urban that, club? That, that's that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say the the only the only hard part was it was was fighting the whole politics of people just not letting you do what you want to do in it like mm -hmm. we had a lot of authorities on our backs saying oh like these are young black kids obviously it's not what they were saying but we knew that's what it was okay. pulling us into this into police stations not for anything bad but just to make just to uh, get a review of how the nights went and stuff like that and we're thinking hold on why is it how come it's only us that is, are having to explain to these guys like what we're doing every saturday night when nothing's happening you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't see any other club managers in these police stations every week having to say, yeah, man, my Saturday night was good. It was all good. Nothing happened. Perfect. We, 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 we were there all the time. There was always on us, man. So in regards to that, that's the part that was I felt like Yeah, I think I just missed that at the end part. I was like, yo, is that my phone buffering? Is that my phone buffering? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway, no, that, I was right? just saying that, 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 that part of it, that was the hard yeah. part. That was the hard yeah. part, dealing with all of that behind the scenes and, it, and no one really saw that part of it. Was that from the beginning or was that near to the end? Nah, near the beginning. Yeah, during See, the whole right? of stuff. Yeah, because when we were opening, we knew we had to speak to license and stuff, but it was like, you can do this, you can't do that. But it was mm. like, ah, club. So everything was kind of in-house. Yeah. We still had to say, uh, give details and everything. Mm. Just, we just felt like, they made, like other clubs wouldn't have been having, basically. Like they made us oh, get they made us, they made us get an ID scanner when we didn't feel like we was like, why, why are we the only ones that need to have this ID scanner? You know what I mean? Just little yeah. things like that. I think you guys were the first ones to have that. I feel like the only people I've seen have a ID scanner afterwards was... um. Was it what's Roses? What, what was Roses before it was Roses on Broad Street? Oh, Rococo had one as well, though. Yeah, Rococo had one. No, nah, but you know the 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 comedy club next to Rococo. I think they had one first. Oh, okay. And then Rococo had one as well, and I was like, yeah. "Wow, like this this yeah. is getting serious now." And I felt yeah. like it's a bit much still. I couldn't understand what they were trying to do, but I'm like, "Nah," because I've seen many fights on Broad Street with no police there, so mm -hmm. it's more of a case of. Um, and if they are on Broad Street, they're probably hanging around the black clubs when, you know, yeah, don't run. Really used to come for Rococo, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Mono had it. And Review had it, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sugar Sweet weren't too bad, to be honest. I think Sugar Sweet's probably been the safer option just because it's always been the club for the young generation, and the young generation mm. are not too, too bad, to be honest. Mm. So. Yeah. It's so like the time when everybody wants to go to Sugar Sweet, it's okay. Like when you're like, younger, should I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I true. agree with that. I agree mm. with that. So, from 2711 then, when that broke down, how was that feeling? Because, like, you've had something that's such a wonderful thing. Um, like, I'm assuming it must have helped your business mentalities. Um, like, what was, when, when the police, was it the police or the licensee that said you have to close? Yeah, it's like the licensing, basically. There was a technical issue with it. The, the guy that had the license before, Mm. who we were buying it off. He went bankrupt, but his name was still on the license while we were kind of finalising the oh, deal. Okay, okay. And when you go bankrupt, you lose the license. So that flagged oh. that uh, you're shutting down and they wouldn't reopen it as a club because all the residents complained, basically saying there was trouble, there was noise pollution, like people pissing in their doorways and that, but... Okay. It's all shit that we can't really control. The noise we can, but okay, we had okay. it turned right down because we had issues from the... Um, Environmental health before this as well, and okay. they were happy with what we'd done. So serious. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. They were on. They were onto us. Onto us. 
sound like they were trying to stop that progress from early, you know. From yeah, early, was, like, was from that, 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 it, but we're gonna shut you down. Yeah, yeah, they just wanted to. They just they, their pl- for me their plan was just make, let's make it as hard as we can for them. Put everything mm-hmm. on them. Every little technical fault that we see, we're getting for it. And eventually, because we could have opened when it shut down, we could have reopened, but mm. under restrictions. And it was restrictions that we weren't willing to work with. Yeah. Okay. Is that like close at like an earlier time and all? Exactly. Kind of yeah. 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 It open as a restaurant and close at yeah. like twelve or one or something like that. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing that we was talking about before. Um, what do you think it was better? in you guys' opinion, like a brunch event, which is in the day, so like a Sunday session type of event or one that you had before, or like a club where you're finishing at maybe three, four o'clock in the morning? Mm. I'll still see this. You'll never get a better feeling than going out when it's dark and coming out mm. when it's light. For <laughs> 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 real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, probably only, that's probably because we've had some of our best nights doing that. Yeah, you get me just going going from a club straight to an after party and coming out in the morning, and it that's yeah. like that's like the core of raving, man. Okay, okay. Yeah. So how has it been it's to like, like the ones, but like a secret random after party as well? Like yeah, yeah, twenty seven, mm-hmm. but but there's after party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think, but there's after party. <laughs> that's it. As I said, that's probably because we've just grown up on that, and we used to love yeah. after parties back in the day, man. Yeah, as, as as house fans, like them them house raves used to go on to all hours of the night. Like for you two person, what's the latest you've had a DJ set? Ooh. Oh we probably played five to six a few times. When the club oh, was six. Six. Did we end up doing them sets though, Luke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember us I remember us talking about how we're gonna how we're gonna make it to that time. But uh, well, whose birthday actually... was at um the gay club down the bottom of you know the bottom of hill from review. Yeah, that, that was definitely last year. I remember that. You know, we was up the spiral thing. Rizzo was that Rizzo's birthday? One birthday, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was yeah. yeah, that was late. That was late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you see them sort of booking, what do you say to the promoter? Like, is it just yeah, yeah, yeah? Or is it like <laughs> why? <laughs> They're not trying for man to eat cornflakes, you know. When you want me to be out here, <laughs> I, I think I think with us, like if we get booked for something, it's mm. not our. We can have our little talk between ourselves, but it's not yeah. for us to say to the promoter, "Come on, why are you put us on that time or give us this time or whatever." In it, they give mm. us a time. It's a job. They want us to do something at that at that time. Cool, we'll work with it and we'll see if we can do it or not. If there's a time we can't do, we'll just say like that we can't do that because of this reason and it will be a valid reason. Mm. But we'll work with it. At the end of the day, it's what we do and it's, it is kind of our, our hobby as well as our job. So people are paying us to play at that mm. time. So that's what that's what we've got to do in it. What is that feeling like to, to have a hobby that you can get paid for and mm. it's just been continuous for 12 years? Like not many people know that feeling. Like some people may love their job, but it ain't your hobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You just enjoy your job. So, what is it like to get paid from a hobby? Go on, Luca. That's you. That is. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, man. It's good. Mm-hmm. Like getting paid for what you love. It's it is what it it's is. It's a no brainer, isn't it, man? Like we've we've been we've we've been playing together before we've entered the clubs, in it. Do you know what I mean? We 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 the first time me and Lucas obviously were doing stuff was making tapes in his bedroom, and we was doing that for fun. So it's exactly what we was doing then, just now, just at a larger scale, in it. So okay. when was that? When did you when you when did you two first meet? Oh, fucking hell! So, like top ten, probably, probably before that. Yeah. At Chambers. Yeah, Chambers. Yeah, it was a we got a mutual friend basically in our our little mm-hmm. circle who. He knew Luca, and then he knew me, but me and Luca didn't know each other at the time. Okay. So, so this mutual friend sort of was like, "Yo," he basically he phoned me up saying, "Yo, I'm going to go around my bridging yard, make a tape. You coming with me?" I said, "Yeah, cool, no problem, man." And we literally went down there. There was like a few of us making a tape with Luca, and then um, okay. at the end of that set, me and Luca just spoke to each other and said, "Yo, me and you just want to do a tape." Who is you? Fuck everybody else. Yeah, we are the vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, wait, wait, Chambers wait, wait, wait. might you might Chambers might end up listening to this. So sorry, Chambers. <laughs> it's one of them. Isn't it? It's all love. So are you honestly saying like the other brothers they just weren't on your level when it comes to <laughs> team guys? Is that what you're basically saying? I think we just clicked at it. 
No, no, no. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, from like, my point of view, from my point of view. Yeah. Like, Chambers was December. December Chambers weren't serious, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Chambers yeah. an MC or a DJ? MC. MC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But he weren't serious about it. Do you know what I mean? He was just, he was just, a, it was a laugh for him, and it. Okay. So he was, but he, he was shit, basically. You can. Nah, say you know what? Nah, you know nah, what? He was, good. He, he was sick. He was, he was sick. Come if on, man. Nah, 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 I swear, to, I swear that. I swear <laughs> that. If he took it serious, he, he could have, he could have got somewhere because Chambers was sick, man. But he just, it just wasn't for him, and he was just there for a laugh. Okay. Yeah, basically, okay. yeah. I feel like that was the majority of most of our MCs. So if we go back to like garage days, who was you lot's um, top? Let's say five MCs, if you can name five garage MCs from Birmingham. Birmingham, well, uh, me, the yeah. obvious ones were for me because yeah. I used to just listen to him, Dr. Vader, Vader. Mm. Vortex. Yeah. Vortex. Mm. Literally, those, those, those pirate radio stations back then, mm. near enough, everyone that was on there, that was, that was my bread and butter there, and it because I used to listen to them like day in, day out. Okay. So what age did you start writing your own bars in this? Uh, what got me into it? No, what age did you start writing? Or what age? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I ain't got a clue, man. Re young, no, man. Dan's going to say, I started off writing poetry and shit. Well, I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going to say, I started <laughs> off. <laughs> 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 now, I had some terrible, terrible first bars, man. But I don't know what, I don't know what age I was, man, but I was young. But I remember sitting, I remember I used to sit on my kitchen table at my mum's yard and um, used to slap on Dutta and I used to just record the tapes and just listen back to them. And I'd probably used to, like, originally, I probably, like, used to flow like all of them guys as well, just because you listen yeah, to them exactly. so much. It was, it was kind of the norm, yeah. in it, back then. That's it, yeah. And then you just kind of develop your own little thing and, and get into it. I think that's how it all started. Did you have, like, um, that, did you start off with that London twang where it was like, shout out to all my ladies? <laughs> I did it a little bit. I did it a little bit. I'll tell you what, though. I, there was one point where, where I had the um, the little Jamaican flow as well, like a yard oh, man thing. Yes. What? Yeah, I missed yeah. that. A, 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 what? Section, a section in our career. I think we were, when we was on um, Sirius FM, I've, I remember listening back to a tape. And I'm like, yeah. what are you doing, Daz? What the hell are you doing, Daz? <laughs> and I'm just speaking like some, like, who's that? Who's, like, that, uh, that, who's, the, who's, that yard, who's that Jamaican MC that, um, <laughs> that, that, that raps for Fingy? What's his name again? Oh, it's not, <laughs> is it Flow Dan? It's not Flo, 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 Dan, yes, yeah. yes, yes, Flo, 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 Luca had bars, man. Wait, Luca, yeah. you, was a, you, was a, you was a barman. No, it was a virus. Nah, <laughs> don't lie, don't lie. Oh, did he keep on your toes, Daz? He, he popped in every now and again. He popped in every now and again with a nice little bar still. Swear down. Okay, okay. So how come when um, Luca, I've seen you do some Instagram lives uh, by yourself and that when Daz weren't there. I'm the, I've never seen you drop two bars. How can we never drop two bars? Uh, I hate speaking, man. Yes. <laughs> just no, let the music talk for itself yeah that's it so I kind of forced myself to do the Instagram lives just to kind of keep it going and I just mm. got I just got into it okay how was that for you guys kind of the end of it that's, that was where this is jumping so back to normal yeah because you you held it down for a while it, by yourself yeah, I think I've done about three three or four weeks maybe okay okay Felt like there was more than that because a couple of times didn't you dress up as well? Yeah. <laughs> one time didn't you come in like a I'm trying to remember. Yes, sir. Uh, one yep. time didn't you come in some sort of sorry or certain mad? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you tried to bring back sex appeal. I was like, oh my <laughs> 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 like, yeah. oh shit. I'm like, okay, Luca. Okay. Then you came one time looking like um like a run DMC. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which fancy dress out, outfit draw, basically. Okay. okay. I, I think that definitely separated your lives because I wasn't listening to nobody else's lives apart from you guys. Because at the time, me and Lauren had like a show called the Top Ten for them, where we just do like top tens for most people. I just thought like 
nobody else was really creative until you guys did yours. And I was like, you know what? These lot are killing it. And when you started talking about, yeah, yeah, bring the, bring like man book tables and buy bottles and talking about <laughs> yeah. of VIP, I was like, oh my days. And the thing is, I've seen people in the comments, you know, and they're all like, yeah, I've got my drink, babe. Have you got know, yours? I'm busy. You know. <laughs> man, I'm like, 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 vibe. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, you need to come secure the club. Nigga, what? Nigga, you don't need to come secure the club. Next thing, man. You're not allowed to have a good time ever. You're always secure the club. I need you to come in there with your badge. I think, man, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And then one time, I feel like, um, Daz, didn't you bring, like, a barrier or something? Yeah, I had a VIP entrance. Oh, my God. Man, that was made for my dressing gown, that was, man. Nice, man. <laughs> oh, oh shit, man! That 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 was entertaining. That, so, what, are you guys um gonna start like Instagram live again anytime soon for lockdown two point Might do one. Yeah, we spoke about it the other day. We we can't really commit to doing it weekly again, but okay. we might do the yard one, maybe two in it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Was there any lives that you guys watch for any entertainment? Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. So- Ah, Continental GT. Yeah, man. yeah, 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 yeah. He was like strictly house though, innit? Well, I don't uh, garage. I think be, you said he garage on the Friday and then house on the Saturday and you kind of mixed it up as well. Wait, it looks Saturday as well? Yeah, he Friday. Silk's day. Because I was uh, kind of thinking like everybody had their own day in it. Like you had yeah, Friday, 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 Saturday, and yeah. Silk did Saturday as well. VIP did Friday. VIP did Friday's early though, innit? <clears throat> Say it again. Did VIP do his sets earlier? I think he might have started just before. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It was but always GT, like- GT and um GT and Silk was always on at the same time on the Saturdays. Yeah, yeah. But oh, yeah, yeah. Like rivals. That's it, yeah, but it kind of worked out because GT plays house and garage, Silk plays R and B bash. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so, true. It's like a room one and room two, isn't it? You can oh, just yeah, that's awesome. true. That's true. <laughs> you know what I tried to remember earlier? Yeah, did you use that? Um, you used to have a set or do a set at Penthouse, yeah. like in the house room. Yeah. 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 Residence in that second room, innit? Yeah. So that was a good love, man. Lauren's been there from the beginning with the strobe lights and all. I'm just highlighting how much I used to go out in it, really, because I was like, yeah, party, mono, 2011. Chill out, bro. They're the good old days, though, innit, man? People don't know about about them type of vibes. Anybody that's young is going to be feeling like, right, how old are these lot, man? Man said the The good old days. Those clubs don't even exist no more. We're talking about bear clubs that don't even exist, like mono, 2711, penthouse, Mm -hmm. Rococo. Yeah. People are like, what's that? That, well, whole, like, that know, whole era, man, got taken me out. Me and were trying to figure out um, what was the club? You know, like where Ming Moon is and the casino. You're trying to figure out. What was the club that came out, but it was late? So I think it was after you guys had talked about Barracuda, club. innit? Oh, T-Bar. T-E-Bar? That's yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. It had that little uh, balcony or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because now it's like a, I think it's like a great place. So, what's your, yes. what's the both of your um, top five venues that you play, play that? <laughs> play that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Review. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you that one, the, be, the best, the best, one of the best places we played at was probably one of our best sets that we've ever had, and that was that was abroad. That this was in um, Mykonos. Is that Greece? Yeah. Chambers. That was, that was for Cha- that was for Chambers' wedding, that was. Uh, Swear Chambers. down. Yeah, yeah. And um, like it was literally like it was such a nice wedding, man. Lovely place, Mykonos is man, amazing place. Mm-hmm. And he said t- he said to us from the start, like, oh, I want you guys to bring your tunes out there, and he like, I want you to play a set, man. And we're like, all right, cool, no problem, man. And mm-hmm. um the after party was all just nice. You get me just settled, everyone dressed up good, nice lighting, everything was fine. And he was like, yo, lads, go and jump on, man. And I had a banging headache as well, man. I was like, oh, man, you're killing us, Chambers. <laughs> Not really that time. Lucky, get me. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of people that I don't think are going to really take to the garage and that, man. He's like, just oh, come on, man. Just jump on, man. So Luca went and, went and jumped on literally like two, three tracks into the set. Everyone's come over going absolutely mad. <laughs> absolutely oh, mad. Yeah. And that, 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 was a, that feeling there, that, that vibe that we had there was amazing, man. 
That's one of our for me. That's probably that's probably the best set that we've ever played for me, anyway. Okay. Okay. Not what about you, Luca? Any 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 okay. other okay. events that stand out? Mm, nah. We we had some good sets at review, and it was always like when we played a good set, it was like I know I'd go home and I just wouldn't be able to see because I was just buzzing. That we just mm. had a great night. But that's probably to do with like the whole night as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, when everything goes smooth, it's busy. Tiptoes goes until six when it's supposed to. It's light mm. outside. And then we always go and get food as well. So what's yeah, the point so open at time? six AM? Because this was before <laughs> my thumbs was twenty four hours. La- you have to go up by Lady Poor Old Man. Yeah. Okay. I know so your belly was running a couple times on the Sunday. So what is the um the biggest capacity that you've played at? Biggest. Yeah, yeah. Probably Joe Hunt's thing the other day. Yeah, Lab Eleven. How much people was there? It was over a thousand. Twelve hundred yeah. maybe. Okay. Yeah. What else have we done? We've done a few though. That's been been quite a big crowd though, I'm sure, man. I just can't. I can't remember them now, we man. We played at um, not harmony. One of the harmonies. Yeah, that's what I mean. Even back in the day, see like uh-huh. them, them garage raves. Like remember Club Air and all of that. Like we played. Yeah, yeah. Even there, you're talking over a thousand people, and that was when we was young as well. So that must have been a mad experience. So, what do you think the most things have changed from like clubbing from? The old, I say older days, like we're really old, but I mean, like from 27, 11 times till now, regardless of like a lockdown and things like that, what are the main things that you have changed? Mm. I don't think that much has changed, mm. other than people getting older. Yeah. And so you see a lot more younger people out just because that's how it goes. When people turn 18, they go out. Mm. And then the people that are 18 turn 21 and they're, they think they're older and better than everyone else, so they want to be partying where there's no kids. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. and then like- and then just just to, just a change of music, innit? That's the that's the, obviously mm. the main thing. You know, what I mean, when we was out when we was out playing back in them days and raving, like house and garage was like you could probably do a majority of the night with that music. Mm. But now, like, unless you're a fan of that music, there's you can't really you can't really squeeze that into a night out nowadays. You know what I mean? Because yeah, a lot true. of people like hip hop and Bashment now, like more than ever. Yeah, mm. Bashment's probably the biggest now. Bashment used to be big when we first started, then it died off. Now it's back again, big time. Yeah. Do you feel like the little, like the little genres that kind of came in, say like um, the baseline kind of came in, funk and house came in. Um, I, I don't want to say grime came in because grime's kind of been here, but it kind of had a moment where it kind of came to the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. So, what kind of music do you guys listen to outside of like uh, house or UKG? Everything. Listen to everything. everything. So, like at work, I'll just have on one extra. So, everything urban. Yeah. Yeah. Same. So same, guys... same for me still, but I still do majority of the time listen to old school garage mixes on Mixcloud and. Oh, okay. Ways, and I'm still, I'm still listening to them daily, man. Yeah. So, what do you think of the current music scene, like the new music that's up and coming now? Yeah, really... yeah, I, yeah, I mean, you, you got to move with the times, isn't it? So yeah. there might be tunes, hip hop tracks that is out there that I might not really take to, mm-hmm. but I understand it and I understand why people like it. Do you know what I mean? So you got to respect that because that's just the, that's just the new era of music at the moment, isn't it? Um, it's not a lot of it isn't for me because I just don't take to just just because it's I don't know, it's just not my style, isn't it? Right. But if I was in a club. I reckon I'd still get down to it though. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I still feel. I reckon it would still catch me. So yeah, I just it's just what it is. You just got to respect what it is, man. Okay. Is there any like Birmingham artists that you've that you've listened to that's what's decent within like the past two, three years? Millions. Millions. Mm, yeah. Okay. I don't know if I expected you like to mention a draw artist. Yeah, man. <laughs> like like his flow, man. Sick and he's like articulate. You can hear what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, JK. Mm-hmm. Start one of the- I think Stardom's sick as well. Mm. Hey. Okay, the- now we're talking. That's Legend. on the map. Brought, brought a few good good tracks out recently as well. We've known him for a while. Yeah. Okay. yeah his, last show, his last show was good. And we went to the show that he did at... Um, was, it, was it Drop Shot? Drop Shot, yeah. Um, for Boohoo. Is it Boohoo? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that, I think. To that as well, Where yeah. was that? To see this venue called Drop Shot. I don't, I don't really think many people know about it. It's down Didbuff, but it's, oh. um, they've got like table tennis tables and stuff like that. But Dap's, Dap's done something down there in conjunction with, I think it might have been Boohoo. Well, it might have been Spotify. Yeah, something like that. I can't remember what it was. was performing there. So, yeah, man, I like Dap's on the map. I feel like he's somebody that's been talented as soon as he came out. I just feel like for okay. him, maybe it was just like life in general because the consistency mm-hmm. wasn't always there. But I I would have bet good money on Daps on the map still. Yeah, yeah, the way yeah. he could rap and the way he could sing, I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like whenever he does come out with a project, it always gets a lot of love. So it's like, yeah. he'll come out with something and then he goes a bit quiet and then he'll come out with something again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it, man. You got you, that's it. You got to respect that, and that's he's trying mm. to be different as well, and that's what's sick about him, man. I still think he is. Like even in twenty twenty, I don't think there's any artist that I really know that can rap or MC and sing as nah, and yeah, yeah. the melodies, the pockets that he finds in a lot of songs. So it's like, yeah, man. Yeah, like, true. do people send you guys any like um, any new music? Like, if anybody makes like pro- like anybody makes any garage uh, or any house. Well, there's not there's not really garage that's being made out there especially in Birmingham there's no real artist making house and garage and I think majority of people know that me and Luca specialize in house and garage so sending yeah. us a drill track it's not there's no point because we, we, we ain't going to get to play that so yeah. that will probably get shifted over to maybe I don't know Day Day Shack 5 Silk VIP one of them but I've, mm. we've had a few people we've had a few things come through um, it's more probably beats or tracks that people have made and they say, give us a spin for it if you can. And we say, yeah, yeah, no problem, man. That's fine. Ah, oh, okay. So you like cut the plates as well? We don't. We don't. But we'll get, we'll play people. That, if people's got tracks that they want to send us, yeah. we'll always take a listen in it and, and try and drop it in somewhere where we can. Oh, no, man. I want a dub plate from you. Like, fuck that. I want that yardy voice. <laughs> I want yeah. that yardy voice. I want to bring back the yardy. <laughs> yes. You might catch me on a drum and you might going back into that, man. <laughs> yeah, I want you to have a glass of rum when you make that dub plate as well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no bottle of Heineken, plus a Magnum and a bottle of rum. That's it. Don't give me a joke. So how's um 2020 been for you guys as like <coughs> DJs and hosts? That's a would you class that as a host or an MC? Host. It's a host, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, yeah more so, host more than anything. People don't huh? do that like a lot anymore. It's just people are just it's just a DJ now. It's not like a DJ with a host. I think I think that's why we work so well because we've yeah. been doing the, the the little duo thing for a while now, and there's not. Oh, I can't really I can't really think of anybody out there that's doing a DJ and a host combination at the moment. Yeah. Not no, I, can, I, I feel like, like, like the, the closest you probably get. In my opinion, it's probably like the bashment, you know the bashment DJs. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, they, yeah, they, like they the do. Sound yeah. of their own voice because I don't know what it's about the Asian crew. I love the sound of their own voice. Uh-huh. Like it's like they like playing rhythms, but they just love to chat. Like they want it to be an. <laughs> Fucking everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they so love how, it. Man. How twenty twenty been? Not being able to MC or not being able to DJ for the both of us. Drayton, man. <laughs> you had big things lined up. Okay, anything that you can touch on? Well, we've still got like over 500 tickets sold for an event we were supposed to have in April. And those yeah, people yeah. decided to hold on to themselves. Yeah, yeah so wait, <laughs> is my ticket, my ticket still valid too? Oh, you, are you one of them? Are you one of them? <laughs> yeah, I'm one of them. And you yeah. know what's next? Every minute yeah. I'm like, is it? Um. <laughs> because the April one, was it the Christmas one? When? Last yeah, year. the last one before April was Christmas last year, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, was that the, the event before? No, nah, my birthday. The, yeah, his birthday in January, which was, it was at um, Nikira. Nikira, the old karma. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was another one. I feel like that one, your birthday, and the Christmas one, I couldn't get tickets for. So you see the April one, I said, I don't give a fuck if I'm going by myself. Fuck everybody in Brom. <laughs> Think you guys, I will punch man up on the door. You're just not getting in. Anymore. <laughs> you see when the lockdown happened? Oh my days. Oh, but I think, I think people still thought that it, they was going to go out because they're like, yeah, it's going to be two weeks. It's going to be two weeks. Mm. Yeah. I thought Boris was on a dickhead thing. Nah, <laughs> Boris was dead nah. I know. I know. Well, I mean, we still get we get messages now, which is understandable about it because people are holding their tickets. They've seen us throw a few things, mm. like we throw, throw I and mean, we've done two. Take away Luca's birthday in January, we've done two parties 
which has been restricted, like with restricted COVID rules and stuff. Yeah. So for us, that's not a Sunday sessions, and because Sunday sessions is all about raving and you get me mingling and going wild and all sorts of stuff in it. So we get messages saying, oh, can I use this Sunday session tickets for your thing coming up? And we have, we're having to say, nah, because it's a completely different thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We, we want to wait. That ticket's valid for Sunday <laughs> sessions. So when we can throw Sunday sessions, that's mm-hmm. when you're there. You get me your front row, 500 of you straight in, bang, and that's a rave then, isn't it? Yeah. Bro, 500 people. 500, that's mad, you know. Big man thing. I want to know how <laughs> quick have you had a sold out event? Because I feel like every time I go on there, it's sold out. <laughs> and I'm one of the dickheads that get the emails. So I'm like, okay, the email tells you 24 hours before, boom, tomorrow we're ready. 901 sold out. Am I a dickhead? <laughs> nah, nah. nah, it's about how it goes. I'm sure it was about 15 minutes one time, you know, and I was saying it to because I was on the way nah. to bed. And I was like, eight o'clock. And my friend's phoning me, but I'm like, why are you phoning me? And I'm trying to do the thing on my phone. And then she's like, she phoned me back and she's like, sold out. I'm like, yeah. what? And I haven't even got nothing yet. And I was like, okay, forget it, forget it. Well, the, that's probably the Christmas one. With because yeah. what we used to do was anyone who's bought a ticket before, they get exclusive access for 24 hours, but we only put a limited amount on. Okay. So that probably that. And then the next day, they're probably sold out sometime during that day. Like the normal release. Hey. Random question. And so can you disclose how much tickets are, are like the early bird tickets? Is there mm-hmm. a certain amount? It's normally not like fifth about fifty. Okay. Okay. I was saying to Lauren, I think you guys should have this this notion of anyone that's brought an early bird ticket for the next event, you can't buy another early bird ticket. <laughs> <laughs> let someone else have the seven pound ticket. Let, let someone out. Yeah, yeah. If there was a way we could do it like that, then we would, man. Because it is a shame sometimes when I see the same people messaging saying, oh, "I've missed out again. I've missed out again. I've missed out again." But then when I when I'm talking back to them, I'm saying, "Oh, was you on there at the time when it says?" And they've openly mm-hmm. said. Nah, but I, I, mean, I literally just had a bit of breakfast and that, and then went and I said, You yeah. can't do that, man. You're mad. I've, I've skipped you, breakfast. Man. I'm a big man. You should have skipped breakfast. I've yeah. skipped yeah. breakfast. <laughs> this one, I've gone to the toilet. Listen, I'm on job. Yeah. Nah. So the April one was the one that I was super on job. I was like, You know what? I'm not a dickhead. I'm not a dickhead. Do <laughs> this to me again. So I missed the, the Christmas one and I missed your birthday. I said, Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, you've done the right thing, man. And is there's that... always an increase in people, I think, because it's like you guys will have a Sunday sessions and then other people that didn't get to go to the last one will see all the pictures and videos and hear about it. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, okay, let me know when the next one's coming in because I'm definitely coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's true. like <laughs> everyone was gassed up, I think, for this April one because they missed out on the Christmas one. You right. might think this April one, we was it wasn't just it's 500 tickets are the ones that held on to their ticket. So uh, I think we, mm-hmm. how much should we sell, Luke? Was it 700 we was on? Just over six. Just over six, okay. 600. So, 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 and that was like two, however, a couple of weeks before the actual event, in it? So mm. it was a big, it was basically a bigger venue that we could have made bigger. It had a like, few different sections. Okay. So depending on how many we saw, we probably could have went up to about 1,200. Yeah. Mm. Wow. And the thing is, I think 1,200 for you, that would be an easy number to, to, I think so. to beat. I think so. Because it was good, it good, mm, that's what I mean. It's a good progress, man. It's good to see that it's, it is yeah. it is elevating in that way, isn't it? Because each Sunday set, each Sunday sessions we've had has been has been more people every time. So as you said, as you said it, yeah. Upstairs bit as well. yeah, 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 yeah. So and that's what I mean. We was we've cut we 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 overgrew that venue there, innit? Like yeah, because that little that's one small little room that was that was mm. not the one, man. It was yeah. a sweat box. The one, know, the one in um, China's <laughs> town. Yeah. Yeah, just that a, room, a, a, you like made that yeah. room literally like Africa. I thought I was in Zimbabwe a couple of times. Like, <laughs> it was oh, hard, man. <laughs> the first one that I went to, I was in there in my, in my in my vest, in my tank top. And I remember I had my ex just, and I was I was, I was was snapping myself, you know, I've still got the snap. I was snapping myself, and my ex come around, and she tapped me. What are you doing? Bitch, <laughs> <laughs> bitch, you know, I'm getting new pussy. What's wrong with you? Listen, you like had me out there so I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I was like, hot in there, man. I was like, no, I was on fire. And I'm a dancer, like, as big as I may be. Like, you're not ever going to see me go somewhere and stand in a corner. I can't. Yeah. Just, 
I you remember, bro. I remember. Up, didn't you know? Huh? You paid for the aircon? You put, no, you didn't. <laughs> paid for the aircon. It was team, non-existent, man. man. If it was on, there must have been just. Nah, nah, I mean, after that, after that. Oh, you paid for after that. After that, yeah. Okay, okay. So we hired a couple of units in. Like, nah, it's not working. So we paid to get proper aircon put in. Okay. We had to pay for, we had to pay for that, and that's from us because the venue manager weren't having. It. He didn't want to spend no money like that. So we were like, nah, man, we've, we've got a good thing going. The people are loving this, man. We need to do mm-hmm. something, man. So, so we ended up... public business to their venue. That's what I mean. And I mean, they did look after us, so I can't, I can't say anything bad about it. <laughs> but they're just... The aircon's an... Exp- it's not... It, it, for, for a venue manager who's, who's got a, an, an event on a Sunday that's every couple of months, he probably, he probably thought to himself, I'm not going to fork out this amount of money just for aircon, mm-hmm. just for those guys. I've got my business and I don't really need aircon for my business in it. It was an African um, venue, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from what I know about my African people, they dance as much as your customers um, at Sunday session. So yeah. I would have thought they would have the same amount of numbers. Like, even if it was like three quarters of the numbers that you guys have, that's still going to be hot. You know, no, so part of what we were using was a restaurant. Yeah. So we, uh, we wanted to use that part because it was more of a daytime thing. Because mm. they got a club upstairs. They've got a club upstairs. And the one in the- They've got one underneath, any the room underneath, upstairs, mm. upstairs. Yes, yes, yes. That's upstairs, upstairs. I say because there's two, yeah. there's two different floors on it. Yeah, yeah. Floor. Floor oh, so that's why. Where was the April one going to be? In Digbeth. Okay, that's what I was looking forward to because it was a new venue, and I thought I, I lost like four stone in that one, <laughs> and I obviously gained it. But I was about eight stone in your new one. I was like, no. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I'm crazy. <laughs> to the test, you, you fuck y'all. I'm going. I'm, like, I'm cutting shapes. I'm cutting vocals. I'm cutting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was all. It was all set to be a good party, man. We 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 had the room and everything was perfect, man. But... So that's when you first and... started um, Sunday mm. session, you started having like food and it. Why did that start? Because the service was shit. <laughs> oh, ooh, okay, oh, y'all are watching technology service with shit. Simple as that, isn't it? <laughs> I man, I'm selling dead food, you know, some half. Nah, shit. Yeah, but if you're paying money for it, you don't want to have dead food, any. Mm. Well, was it wasn't it. even. It wasn't even. It wasn't even the food as such, man. It was literally just the service, man. It was just. It was taking way too long to get to people, and it, and it happened, and it happened more than once. Do you know what I mean? And we we did say the first time we did say to them, look, man, like people are waiting an hour for their food, plus like an hour and a half for their food, man. This kind of next time, minute, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we said like next time, like get some staff, do let's do it properly, man. And it was like, all right, cool, we'll do it. And it happened again, and it it was like, nah, man, we can't do this, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, people are just going to be coming to use like with the complaints, and it's not That's actually exactly, yeah. the fault, yeah. it? and you can't really do much. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I felt like the bar as well. Sometimes the bar was like a madness. It was like yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's every time, like get more bar staff, get more drinks, sort the food out. Mm. But when we used to do it there, we felt like we were kind of like helping manage the venue, which we didn't yeah. mind. But it's like the fucking didn't listen, man. Yeah, Hard to work with. it sounds like whatever they, whatever business that they had going on, sounds a bit half-hearted to where Sunday sessions was going to. I feel like you guys yeah, were just yeah. elevating. So you wanted them to elevate with you, but it sounded like whoever it was just was comfortable with, with what they had. And, and it's a shame to be honest, because I felt like you guys were ready to do them 1200 numbers. And I felt like mm-hmm. arenas and stuff is, 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 is what is next from Double Impact. Cause it's like shit there. Mm-hmm. You guys have a serious yeah. fan base. I can't even say that enough because the, the supporters, the followers that you guys have, they're loyal to the soul. As well, so I feel like you like could have some fucking rock and roll rave. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna rave next week. Yeah, I'm going. You kick it. You know, listen, listen, as soon as you hear that now, we've come to mash up your weekend. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You know, that's it. You're like, all right, I'm so forget whatever, whatever it's over in any genre. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I want Dazzle we can rock you, big man. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? No, nah, it's true. It's true about the, the, the following though. Like that's that's massive love from us to to, the, to our following because we we got people in Sunday so as much as we get randoms that we don't know and don't see at Sunday sessions, mm-hmm. we still get the odd few that has been there from like day one with us. Do you know what I mean? And we're like, it's so grateful to see that man. It's amazing, man. And that's yeah. why we started doing double impact, double impact and friends, the free ones. 
just mm. to kind yeah, of for that. the people that oh come. that was like the give back yeah mm. yeah it was just like we just yeah, started you said bring a bottle and we just strung up and just played for most of the night that's yeah. nice you know to give back yeah. to people that have supported you for a long time yeah. <clears throat> I feel like also giving back I feel like you know when you've had like special guest um, MCs or singers at Sunday session I feel like that was that was also kind of giving back because a lot of people our age and like around our ages don't really do the concert thing. So it was good to hear some of your art, yeah. your artists, your favorite artists that you like from years ago. Because yeah. you've had people like um, like Mighty Mo. You've had like, did you have Romeo as well? We've had Romeo at, at uh, review. Not, not on Sunday sessions. That re- yeah, at review. Okay. Who else have you had at Sunday sessions? There was like a female garage artist as well that was there Lady one time. Stush. We had two. We had Lady Stush. Oh, um, sure, okay. Yeah, and then we had uh, Selena was um was the first lady that we had there, and she she sings uh give it up, give it up, give it up. Oh, Isn't that Captain. the lady from Birmingham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Birmingham. yeah. What happened to her like progressing? Because do you, you guys know her like personally? Not like close like that, but we didn't know okay. when when she had the tune out basically. Yeah. Okay, because I only found out like a couple of years ago um, when I was at lip sync and somebody did her song. And they wanted to get her to come um, to help perform. And I was like, wait, she's from Birmingham. I didn't even know. Like, those yeah, little yeah. gems there. I know. Like, I, I, I was shocked to hear that she was from Brom. Like, as I said, like, we, we, we I think she tried to, um, she booked us for her birthday, like, a few years ago. But it didn't go ahead. Mm-hmm. But, like, that was the first time, like, we kind of had a little conversation with her. Before that, we didn't, we didn't know her at all. We knew the tune and we knew who she was. But other than that, and then, like, we just fought with Sunday Sessions. Let's reach back out to her, man, and get her down. And she was all up for it, man, and she absolutely smashed it, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like some of some of our Birmingham, like, garage heads, like the MCs especially, obviously, I just don't know why they never just transitioned to uh, bigger roles. You know, I know. I've, I've, said that. I've said that before as well, man. There, there was so much good art in my opinion as as a real garage head like i feel like there was so much good artists that we had and i felt like at the time i wasn't listening to london artists uh, london mc like that so i just loved the thing that we had you know did you yeah. guys go to the slammer jammers 7-elevens yeah um, holy bashes <laughs> yeah what else am i missing <laughs> any ice any yeah yeah, yeah. That was similar, oh, kind of ice. What yeah, was it by um or by the blues band? Oh, the BCA yeah. Jenkins Street as well. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I about that one as well. Yeah, Butcher's yeah, yeah. Madness. Butcher's that's... Madness. Yeah, yeah. She was mad. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> yeah, no. Hey, that's what I feel like. We had such a good community. When we look at it now, like say, like the Dizzy Rascals and other artists that age, how come they never transitioned into just? more garage artists, grime artists or a yeah, yeah. and or something because if, if they did the scene now for the Birmingham obviously Birmingham's got a decent scene now but it took a long while for us to get what we've got now in 2020. Yeah. It took a long while for artists to get that recognition from Birmingham. Yeah. I think it took a, it took it well it, it took a while for the for UK. I know London was always in front of us mm-hmm. but UK as a whole to get on the stations on music videos yeah. and all of that it took ages and look, we're dominating it now, isn't it? But you're right, like Birmingham had so much talent where the guys that was running it back then, they could have done so much. But you never know, man. You do, you just don't know what kind of held them back or people might have put walls in front of them and all sorts of stuff. And it's, you never know, man. Yeah, well, I think the older that I get, the more, because I only listen to UK music, so I know how it can be. And I know ex- the, the mentality of a lot of Birmingham artists. And I just feel like, because I never knew about you guys when I was listening to Garage. I didn't know about MCQ when I was younger. I didn't know about Limey when I was younger. Mm. I didn't know about Ginger Mac when I was younger. So it's like, how are the four top hosts in Birmingham, all MCs that, that not to be disrespectful, but you wasn't all like, like GT, like GT, like I, I, I know GT as an MC from yeah. Silk yeah. Event. You get me? Yeah. So yeah. it's like, yeah. <laughs> It was good to see him transition into a DJ, so it's current. But his brother, like RD, yo, I can't lie. I think Diggers is fucking sick. Yeah, like, yeah. Back then, like for years and years, and it wasn't because I knew of him. It was just like I rather think him and like digital. I just 
when I look DJ. at it now, I feel like even now you guys are still not doing anything music when you're probably still talented. Even just ghostwrite for somebody, it's like, oh, <laughs> oh man, just write a pop song for somebody now. <laughs> you know what I'm I hear that, but you know what? Over the years, I've had a lot of people like say to me personally, like, "Let's make a track, man. Make a track, and it make a track." Mm. And mm. my answer's always been no. Like, I, I don't know what it is, man. I just don't like being an artist rather than hosting a set. Is like it's just not that. It's not the route I wanted to take, man. And even yeah. now, mm. even now, like it's not. It doesn't appeal to me to be an artist like that. Do you get me? I enjoy what I'm doing and what I do. I've got my job apart from doing that. Do you know what I mean? So it's just like, it is what it is, man. All right, so you like you me... enjoyment from it if you transitioned into an artist then? Nah, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't want to transition into an artist. No, I mean, okay, if you said like you did, would you think like you would lose the enjoyment that you get from doing it? I would, uh, yeah, I reckon I'd lose the enjoyment I get from doing what I do now, yeah. as in hosting a set with Luca. Mm. I might get a different type of enjoyment being an artist. Mm. You, you never know in it, but it's just never been what I wanted to do. Yeah. Mm. So if one of the big artists, like a like a Mist or Millions, hollered at you to jump on the feature, would you do it? Yeah, I'm there, bro. I'm on the feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get me on. Give me the first one. No, no, no. <laughs> You'd have to, man. Right? <laughs> of course, bro. Get me on there, man. <laughs> millions. Yeah, man. I, that, I, that, uh, that's a sell-off, you know. <laughs> that's a sell-off, you know. I, who actually, you know, when you were younger, yeah, when you first started off, who gets more attention from the ladies, a DJ or an MC? It used to be a DJ. <laughs> DJ? <laughs> it used to be. Used to be. And then it huh? changed. I'm not saying me, then him. I'm just yeah. saying. I'm trying to say with chess, you know, in general. Say chess. Yeah, I think I don't think it. I don't think it matters for a DJ and a host. I think it's the person, the personality, the character. Yeah, I, and I think that's what it is. That doesn't mm. matter in a club, man. I think it does, though. I think it does. I think <laughs> you can always tell. Yeah, I'm. Tr I'm trying to think. I, I would. I. I think I kind of agree with Luke. I think like at some point, I think DJs were just getting all the gallon. Just because there were DJs, mm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, literally, like... Yeah, man. There was, on, there was on the forefront more than any artist. True, yeah. But then, when 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 did it change? When when did the artist start getting more love, more appreciation from the ladies? I don't even know, man. I don't know. You know, because the only time I'd say I'd probably be wrong is, like, so, like, fucking Romeo and his DJ. Like, I can't imagine whoever Romeo's DJ getting more pussy than him. I, I don't think that's a, <laughs> I don't think he has a case. You know what, though? Yeah. That, 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 that might have been it. When Soul Solid come out with 21 seconds, that might have mm. been the time where all the girls were like, yo, you get me? Romeo's on the mic, Carvey's on the mic, mm. all of them. And it might just, that might have been the turning point then, you know? Yeah, because it was more because it was a video. Because obviously, if you think about yeah, yeah. Old Grime, Garage, and all them type of things, it's mainly radio, and you're only hearing man's yeah. voice. Even yeah. you think, oh, yeah, that's such and stuff. So yeah. when people are bringing out videos now, you can actually see them, and women yeah. are like, oh, it's actually quite good looking, actually. Yeah, you got, you got Romeo showing off his six pack and all that. And he, obviously, they're going to yeah. be all over. Yeah. I wanted to close on him. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> And he just come out, he had 21 seconds and he come out with his shirt up like, like what are you yeah. doing, bro? Yeah, it, hello. How cool you are. There was storms and rain and that in yeah. the cave. <laughs> what are you doing? Fucking no. <laughs> but those are the days, bro. But yeah, gentlemen, man. I want to say thank you very much. I want to leave it there just because I want to part two with you guys. I need another conversation with you guys. Mm. There's so much more that 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 we both, me and Lauren, want to discuss. And I I've got to have a part story. Two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. yeah man. We'll after the next yeah. rave. Okay. When is not, the next not one? The day after Wait, though, the next because... next month? <laughs> no. I would be tired. I would do after the the next Sunday sessions. Okay, that's in April, yeah. isn't it? Whenever it no, is, it was in April. It was supposed to be in April. Yeah, okay. but you only—I don't know if you can commit because that might. I don't, you don't know when that's going to be, man. Barry says we can go at Christmas. We'll go at Christmas. Yeah. I'll swear down. Yeah. But the, sun, the tickets are there, so we can go to a venue and say, we've got this many tickets ready to go yeah. now. Ah, okay. I was thinking because he's kind of um, ex <clears throat> extended a furlough to March, I thought maybe not till April, everything resumes back to kind of some form yeah. of normality. Yeah, I can see it being okay. but that's politics, isn't it? Man? 
So do you yeah. feel like the one next month is still going to go ahead? Is that December the 13th? Or is that still up in the air? It's, it depends it, what happens. Just it, depends what they say. Mm. If okay. this lockdown is just a short one and it, everything goes back to, you know, the tier one, two, three system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As long okay. as we have like a restaurant open, then we'll, we'll be good to go. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, thank you That's to fun. Luca Bialy and Bobby Dazzler. They are double impact. And if you've never been to a double impact rave and you live in <laughs> Birmingham, you are a scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying right. live and direct. You're a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> you broke your scumbags because your virgins have been and had a good time and not told you. You probably <laughs> smell. So double yeah. in the next event. So, Enough gentlemen, respect, guys. thank you for joining Appreciate us. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. 100%. Yeah.